My Line. Brought to you by Universal. There's a world of quality in Universal, famous for fine electrical appliances for your home. And now, let's all play What's My Line? And now, live from New York, let's meet our What's My Line panel. First, the delightful star of stage and television, Miss Arlene Francis. And now, one of the most magnetic personalities in the theater who is presently packing them in at the Americana, Mr. Harry Belafonte. Now, a young lady who made my opening night at the Americana a bit more pleasant than I'd expected, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. On my left, a man whose new book, Riddle Dee Dee, is doing just fine, Mr. Bennett Sirk. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like you to cast your gaze upon the only panel moderator in all television who answers to the name of John Charles Daly. <laughs> Good evening and welcome to What's My Line. Harry Belafonte, it's fine to see you once again on the panel. I hope you have some fun in this half hour. At least it, you can relax a bit where you won't make you sing. All you've got to do is to try to guess some interesting occupations. I think you'll all find they're interesting. And we'll also have a famous mystery challenger before my friends on the panel a little bit later in the program. And we'll meet our first challenger after this. And now to meet our first challenger. Will you enter and sign in, please? Fergus? Montgomery, right, sir? <laughs> Montgomery, where are you from? Newcastle, England. Newcastle on Tyne? That's right. Oh, nice to have you with us, Mr. Montgomery. May I present our panel? Mr. Montgomery from England. Would you join us here, please? Do you know, coming from England, how we keep score on what's my line? Yes, I do. I know you have a, a copy of our program there, which is almost the same sort of thing. Well, since you know how to keep score, we'll let the audience in the theater and the audience at home know exactly what your line is. All right. <laughs> Panel, we can tell you that Mr. Montgomery is salaried and deals in a service. And we'll begin the general questioning with uh, Arlene Francis. Mr. Montgomery, do you work for a profit-making organization? Oh, no. Oh, One down and nine to go, Mr. <laughs> Belafonte. Are you in what you would call public service? Yes. Mm -hmm. Does this service take you into the home? You mean as an integral part of the everyday activity of the service, sir? Yes so that it would be necessary that on a daily basis he go into home. No. I don't know why I have the feeling I'm getting a no. You're getting a no. <laughs> That's two down and eight to go, Miss Kilgallen. Uh, do you by any chance have any other title except Mr.? You mean am I called Sir or Lord or something? Uh, no, not necessarily. I was thinking of something in public service. Yes. Uh, are you by any chance Mayor of Newcastle? No. Now, three down and seven to go, Mr. Sir. Mr. Montgomery, uh, is your work, the work that the service that you perform, I pre presume is done for some form of government, is that correct? Yes. Would it be local rather than national? No. Four down and six to go, Miss Francis. You work for the national government then? Yes. In some capacity. Um, are you elected to office? Yes, unfortunately. Uh, <laughs> Uh, would ever anyone find you around the Houses of Parliament? Well, they could occasionally, yes. Uh, do you stand or sit in the House of Commons yes, ever? Yes, we stand. We don't run. <laughs> <laughs> no. Are you to be found in the House of Commons? Yes. 
Well, actually, you've got it. Mr. Ferguson. A member of Parliament. A member of Parliament. He's a member of Parliament. Right. <laughs> Well, actually, uh, Mr. Montgomery, it was worth a try, and I think it might, must be quite interesting for you to be here in the United States while we're in the throes of our so-called off-year elections. Yes. Do you find that our election procedures are more rigorous or less rigorous than those that you have to follow at home in election time? Well, I think they're more rigorous. I think you've got to campaign longer. Mr. But I think you get much better salaries than we do. Mr. <laughs> <laughs> Montgomery, uh, might we ask uh, which side of the house you sit on? Oh, I, I'm a conservative. But that's very different from conservative in America. Don't, you know, misunderstand the two. Well, Actually, you are I think... a supporter of Macmillan. Oh, yes, I'm a supporter of Macmillan. Member of the Conservative Party. I think perhaps it would be true of both our countries that labels no longer are susceptible to precise definition. It's very hard to tell now just exactly what a Democrat or a Republican or a Conservative or a Liberal Party member is at, uh, in England. I'm sorry we didn't uh, give them a little more puzzlement, sir, but I must say that... Uh, nice of you to come and throw those all over anyway and thanks very much for giving us a moment of your time in the United States to be a guest on What's My Life. And now let's meet our second challenger. Will you enter and sign in, please? Alexandra Lindley. Is that right? Is it Miss or Mrs.? Miss. Miss Lindley, and where are you from? Miss Cardiff, Wales. Cardiff, Wales. Yes. Well, fine. It's nice to have had a countryman of yours yes. here tonight. I suppose it probably helps me to feel yes. more at home. Well, it's nice to have you with us. May I present our panel? Now, would you join me over here, please, Miss Lindley? Are you familiar with our scorekeeping yes, system? I am. All right. In that event, we'll let the audience in the theater and the audience at home know exactly what your line is. Our guest uh, is salaried, deals in a service, and let's begin the general questioning with um, Bennett Sir. We're getting a lot of bundles from Britain tonight, aren't we? <laughs> Miss, uh, Miss Lindley, uh, does the service that you perform take place more outdoors than indoors? Yes. You look like a person who has been out in the open air quite a bit. Has your service got anything to do with either farming or raising of animals of some sort? Yeah. Would it be animals? Yeah. Uh, well, Wales is just littered with sheep and horses. Is it uh, <laughs> either sheep or horses that you have your dealings with? Yeah. Oh, dear, which? <laughs> uh, would it be sheep? No. One down and nine to go, <laughs> Miss Benson. <laughs> nice I'm going, Benson. I was just pleased you didn't ask if it was whales. <laughs> um, oh. <laughs> if it were whales, I mean. Uh, horses, then, eh? Yeah. Uh, do you um, come in direct contact with these animals yourself? Yes, I do. Do you break them or train them in any way? Yeah. You're a horse trader. <laughs> no. <laughs> now, actually, uh, break and train is we're accepting covers such a large area, Arlene, that we gave you a yes answer, but there's still a specific area of activity with which you uh, uh, have to uh, identify, Miss Lynn. Uh, do you have horses yourself? No. That's no. two down and eight to go, Mr. Belafonte. Uh, in dealing with these horses, do you train them for purposes of sport? as differentiated from domestic? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, are they entered in competition? Yes. I see. Do you train jumpers? Yes. Good. Is Actually, that's that very good, Harry. And I'm going to say that you, you have identified Miss Lindley broadly. But let's see if one of you can come up with the exact term that would describe, exactly describe what Miss what Lindley does. 
I only want you to do it because it, you'll be surprised that Miss Lindley does what she does, really. Does she teach them to jump over the hurdles? No. Okay. No. She's not a steeplechase performer herself. No. no. Get into the basics of the barn and the paddock, etc. The, no. the barn and the paddock? I mean, groom your mind and see if you can't come up oh. with some. <laughs> <laughs> right. Does groom groom. Yeah. Miss Lindley is a groom, exactly. <laughs> Actually, what we have done here is you have won a tactical victory. We threw all the cards <laughs> out because I don't think they'd ever have come up with the exact description of groom. But Miss Lindley travels all over the world, and uh, I believe you have been associated with horses that have won in international competitions. Yes, we mm -hmm. own the horse, Mr. Softy. Mr. Softy. Yes, and he won the European Championship in London. Yeah, that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. That's great. Good. How long have you been doing it? About four years. About four years. Mm -hmm. Are you going to groom any here? Yes, we're competing at the show with Mr. Softy. Oh, nice. Two of the four shows in America. Oh, where are you going to go to in America with the show? Um, we're at Washington at the moment, and we're coming to New York. And we're going to Toronto, Canada. Oh, wonderful. Well, I hope Mr. Softy does you as proudly yeah. here as he did you in Europe. And lots of good luck. And thanks very much for being our guest. It's nice to have you here. We'll meet tonight's mystery guest in just a moment. But first, here is a word from our sponsor. And now we come to the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery challenger, for which, as you all well know, the panel is always blindfolded. Are those blindfolds all solidly in place, panel? Yes, yes lady. Sure. Good. Will you enter mystery challenger and sign in, please? panel, as you know, in the case of our mystery challenger, a different form of questioning, one question at a time, in turn, moving clockwise. And let's begin with um, Mr. Belafonte. Uh, are you in the entertainment field? Are you in the entertainment field? Yes. Miss Kilgallen? Are you British? Are you British? No. One down and nine to go, Mr. Sir. <coughs> Are there more than one of you? Yes. Miss Francis? Are you uh, a man and woman? Oh, yes. <laughs> As opposed to two women, that is. Yes. Which I'm always opposed to. <laughs> <laughs> Mary? <laughs> Are you, uh, are you in the field of sport? Well, uh, no, not really. Two down a day to go, Miss Kilgallen. Are you in show business? Yes. Mr. Sir? Would you have any connection with a great big fat hit that has very recently come to town? Well, um, yes. Well, I guess Bennett has it, and it on uh, anybody that um, uh, has an opportunity certainly ought to see these people on the stage. It Don't is the big so guy, smart, like man at Fabre, <laughs> and is it Bob Ryan Bob with Ryan. You're right. Yes, yes. Dorothy. May I? A paraphrase an Irving Berlin song and say to Nanette, we loved you. Uh -huh. <laughs> both. Both. You're both charming in the play. Could I, think, I think it does need to be explained for a lot of folks who are not residents of New York that Mr. President, Irving Berlin's great new show, opened in New York last night. So this is why you 
by having all these... Reputations. I can tell you that I'm sure Mr. Belafonte, who's an old friend of mine, is very nervous to know that I have now decided to start singing. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Ryan, we all thought you sang extremely well last night. Well, thank you. That's and uh, right. playing the president and his wife, I thought you brought new luster to the White House. <laughs> <laughs> Now Anybody I know why God kept me up all those nights when he was shooting the picture asking me how to sing. <laughs> <laughs> you mean to say, Harry, you taught him how to sing for Mr. President? Well, I don't want to take all the credit. <laughs> <laughs> you can have it, Harry. Which, uh, which uh, Ms. Fabray, which of all the Irving Berlin songs is your particular favorite in this show? I think uh, the song that Dorothy mentioned, They Love Me, is my favorite. I get to kick up my heels a little bit in that one, have a good time. <laughs> A little bit is an understatement. <laughs> Comes out sitting on a great big white elephant. <laughs> How about that? When we were in Washington, we put, when we did the show for the president and his wife and, and uh, for the president's party, we put a donkey at the show. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> the well, everybody gets so sensitive in these political years. I don't blame you a bit. Man. It's a great idea. Well, I know that the two of you have come through all that great period of test and trial on the road, and I know that you... Not unscathed. Not unscathed. Well, not, nobody ever comes out of that trial unscathed, and I know you must have been tired, and this would have been a welcome night off. So thank you very much well, from all of us for coming to join us. It's great pleasure good to you. see you again. Good to see you. <laughs> whether it's your inspiration or what it is, but panel, I must admit you've done very well so far tonight, and we'll have another contestant after this word from our alternate sponsor. <laughs> and now to meet another challenger. Will you enter and sign in, please? Emmanuel Rett. Right, sir? <laughs> Well, Mr. Rest, where are you from? I'm from Rigo Park in Queens. Rigo Park in Queens. That's yes. a part of New York City. Yes, it used so. to be known as the garden spot of the world until they started building all the dwellings and apartment houses. And but that's it's all right, still nice. Well, well I'm, glad, I'm glad you're still happy <laughs> in Rigo Park. May I present our panel? How do you do? Mr. Rest, join me over here. Do you know how we keep score and what's my line? Yes, sir. Fine, then we let the audience in the theater and the audience at home know exactly what your line is. Thank you. All right, panel, we can uh, tell you that Mr. Rest is self-employed, that Mr. Rest deals in a product, and let's begin the general questioning with uh, Dorothy Kilgallen. Could I use this product? Yes, you can. Could Bennett? Yes, he can. Could I hold it in my hand? Yes, you can. Is it useful rather than just uh, luxurious or decorative? Well, I think there that the, the, the fundamental purpose for which it would be used uh, would suggest that uh, you would hope it would be useful and achieve a purpose, yes. Yeah. Right? Very good. <laughs> very good for you, very bad for us. <laughs> Is it solid rather than liquid? Yes, it is solid. Uh, would it be found in the home? Yes, it would. Would it be found in any special part of the home rather than another part? Not particularly. No, that would be one down and nine to go, Mr. Sir. Mr. Rass, might this product be generally categorized as in the apparel or something that people wear department? Could be to a degree. I think Bennett stipulated here that the, he was asking the question in a very general category as to apparel or it being worn. Being and I think on the if, person. Would if you mean this in a, in a very general way, Bennett, we yes. would have no recourse but to give you an affirmative answer. Well, thank you, John. Oh, it's a pleasure. <laughs> uh, Mr. Rass, if this uh, was uh, applied in some way to the person, would it be above the waist? Could be. 
I think it would be fair to say, Mr. Ress, here that we would assume that it would be used above the waist, but this does not debar the possibility of its use below the waist, right? May I, may I have a conference? Yes, may we have a conference? Uh, you, you, you have fun. Maybe we did a bit. I didn't expect to bring that forth with an innocent remark of this sort. Mr. Mr. Rest uh, feels that that's fair to say that uh, it is worn, I would say, generally above the waist, but it is also worn below. It is also worn below. Could it be worn in both, both above and below the waist at the same time? Oh, that's a tricky one. <laughs> could, could it be both? No. No? Well, now, wait a minute. You're speaking here. You're asking if the product could be worn at the same at time. At the same time. Might it sometimes uh, stick the up product. above the waist and also below the waist? The product could be, yeah. It could. Yeah, he said if. Well, he meant the product. The, the product. reference point back was to the... Your reference point when you said it, Ben, it was back to the product, wasn't That's it? right, of course. Yes, not to a singular or uh, I isolated item. I have the vaguest item. idea yet what the product is. Oh, splendid. <laughs> uh, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Rest, if the product uh, was being uh, worn or uh, adorned a person in a certain way, would it be visible when that person walked casually down the street? Yes, it would. Would it, uh, and it would, it would not attract any undue attention? It could. It could, but it does not necessarily mean that it would. It would pretty much depend on the circumstances under which the wearer was exposing himself and the product of the color. <laughs> well, just to get off, would this product sometimes be worn above the neck? Yes, it could. <laughs> it could. <laughs> I seem to be uh, hooked here somewhere. Might it be worn above the nose? Yes, it could. Might it be worn on top of the head? Yes, it could. <laughs> is, there any, uh, is there any false hair connected with it? <laughs> are, are you insinuating? No, it's <laughs> just, you're not a piece to go. Mr. Rest, I was just trying to get off. <laughs> Ali? Has this product ever been alive? No. <laughs> Three out of seven to go, Harry. Is this product in the form of uh, material? I mean, like, for instance, one thinks that a, um, when you wear a cream or you wear lipstick, which is not uh, of cloth, is this product of a cloth? No, it is not. Close. No, it isn't, Mary. That's four down and six to go, Miss Kilgallen. Could this have anything to do with an election campaign? Uh, yes. Do you make something that advertises a, a candidate? <coughs> yes. Like a campaign button? Right! <laughs> On May 25th, 1952, if you'll carry your memories back, Mr. Rest was with us then. And he had some buttons made up then from pictures of each of you on the panel uh, who were there 10, ten years, years ago. ago. And he just asked me what he should do with them. And I said, I was quite sure that you'd love to have them and that he should give them to you as he departs the... There we are. It would be Bennett and Dorothy and Arlene they in that ten order. Years ago. I'm sorry, Mr. Belafonte <laughs> wasn't here 10 years ago, so I don't have So am I. Thanks very much. Oh, nice to have had you with us. That's the Emrest Specialty Company, and I think we had a lot of fun with it, and good night, Miss Arlene Francis. I was a brunette then. <laughs> <laughs> good night, Harry. It was so nice to have you with us. Thank you, Arlene, and good night. Good night, uh, Harry. Good night, Bennett. You know, I'm startled to see I look really 10 years younger on this thing. <laughs> good night, John. Good night, Bennett. Harry, nice to have you with us, and here's a button Mr. Rest made up for Bennett. Be nice to me. I'm rich. And good night, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for being with us on What's My Line. What's My Line is a CBS Television Network production in association with Mark Goodson and Bill Totman. Johnny Olsen speaking.